All right, testing one, two, one, two. Looks like everything's on. Everything's good to go. I hope everybody's having a great 2023 so far. Um, and today we're going to be doing a little OBS tutorial specifically for recording. Uh, if you find this video at all helpful, please leave a like on the video, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions, if I need to clarify anything for you, as well as we do have a Discord you can pop into and send me a message whenever you would like. Um, but other than that, we're going to try to use as little fluff in this video as possible, and we're just going to get right into it. So when you first install OBS, you're going to get something that looks a little like this. Um, this is the 29.0.0 version, which came out about two days ago. Um, but yeah, you should get something that looks like a little bit like this. You can install plugins and everything to, you know, splice it up however you want to get your Twitch chat on here, however you want to do that. But first thing we're going to go into is we're going to go into the settings down here at the bottom right. And then you're going to get this window pop up. You have different themes you can choose from if you would like, but we're not going to mess with that right now. We're just going to stay default. And then after that, we're going to go to the output mode. This should be on simple for you. You're going to switch it to advanced. Once you switch it to advanced, you're going to then go over to recording. And you're going to go right in here to the recording path. You can click browse and choose whatever file you want to save it into. Um, as you can see here, I have uh, it go to video folder and then a raw dump folder. It's just where I put all my raw footage. I also have a second hard drive specifically for videos. You don't need to do all that. I would just organize it uh, in any way that, you know, helps you make content easier. Um, it's really, it's, it's not that complicated. It's whatever works in your head, you know. Um, next, you go to the recording format. It should already be on MKV, but if it's not set it to MKV, that's going to help us with some stability and stop things from getting corrupted later on. Um, it will take up a more space on your hard drive, but trust me, it's worth it. Uh, I had a whole week of just corrupted videos, and it was it was <laughs> not fun. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that will do double your recordings. Uh, it will take up a little bit more space in your hard drive, but either way, uh, then we're going to go down to the encoder. You're going to hit the NVIDIA NVENC H264 encoder. Uh, now, this is an Intel graphics card specific. Um if you have an AMD, you can use AMD. Honestly, this I would test uh, on your own. Uh, you also can use X264. It depends on the CPU and the graphics card you're using. Again, if you have a good AMD graphics card, use their encoder. If you have a good Intel graphics card, I have a 3070 Ti, so I use the Intel encoder. If you have a beefed up CPU, use X264. Uh, that's to my understanding on what it would do, but I've never had to switch it off of the NVIDIA NVENC. I've always had a decent uh, NVIDIA graphics card. Now, all right, scrolling down just a little bit right here to encoding settings, we're going to keep that at CBR. Now, what CBR stands for is controlled bitrate, so it should be just a static bitrate the entire time you are recording. Uh, next for your bitrate, I believe it defaults it to something like 1500. I sit at about 6K or 16K, I apologize. Um, anywhere from 10 to 15 is going to get you good 1080p, 60 FPS quality videos. Um, if you want to do something more like 4K, you're going to have to set it to around 22,000 to 25,000. Uh, if you're doing something like 720p, you know, maybe you don't have that great of a hard drive, internet connection, uh, whatever you might need for your, your bit rate. Um, you can set it a bit lower. Again, play with it. I would adjust it by 1,000 in either direction um, and just test videos and see what comes out best for you. It gives you the least amount of dra drop frames and highest quality video to your liking that makes it satisfactory to you. Because uh, if you don't like what you're looking at, uh, your viewers aren't going to like what you're looking at. <clears throat> All right, preset. I do have mine set the slowest, best quality, tuning, high quality as well. Um, all of this you can leave at default. Uh, next, we're going to go to the audio settings on the left-hand side here. This you really don't have to mess with too much. We'll do a separate video for audio because it is a whole in-depth thing, and it, it's, it gets really complicated, um, especially if you have something like what I have. I have a Wavelink uh, 3. So there's a whole nother software you got to go into to mess with stuff and you can get your discord and your browser settings all different. So stream can hear your Spotify, but then they can't hear your friends on discord or vice versa. <clears throat> um, but generally just set up your desktop audio, your first one to whatever you listen through. So I have mine set up to my Corsair void pro and then your mic can be whatever you're talking through. So I'm talking through my wave three. So I set it to mic in wave three. <clears throat> All right, after the audio settings, we're going to go down to video settings. Now, just make sure this is at whatever your resolution is. 
Um, obviously, I do 1080p, so I have it set to 1080p. My common FPS is 60. If you look right at the bottom here, it also shows that it is running 60. So again, if you have a decent end machine, most machines can run 60 FPS, especially if you're recording. I would imagine your, your PC's, you know, moderately good. Um, it doesn't have to be some, some people do do it on budgets. And with that, you can choose something like, you know, 30 FPS or something like that, or, you know, 48, I guess. <laughs> again, always ran 60. Uh, everybody I know runs 60. So try it out again. When you're, when you're recording anything, you just play with settings until you get the right one. So these use these settings as your baseline and then start adjusting up or down a little bit, depending on what you have. All right. And then for the final setting, you go to advanced on the left-hand side here. I set my process priority to high. Um, that just means OBS itself will be processed higher on my PC on the priority list. Um, it's not, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You can keep it on normal. That's perfectly fine. All right. Sorry for the weird little cut there, a little future me bit here. Um, there is a setting I actually missed, uh, right here in recording in the advanced settings, which you should already be in at this point in the video. Uh, just make sure automatic remux to MP4 is checked. That is what's going to give you the, the duplicate files. So you're going to have one MKV video and then one MP4 video. So you can edit the MP4 video um, and upload that one. You can upload that one directly to YouTube. Um, I, I believe you can with the MKV as well. Uh, but the MKV will uh, you know, stop a lot of the corruption and stuff. Uh, you know, if, if OBS randomly shuts down, the MKV video will be saved and MP4 will not. It'll just be corrupted. Um, but yeah, make sure that box is checked and we're just going to go right back to the video. All right. And then after that, our settings are good. Make sure you click apply and then click OK. And now your settings are all good right there. There's two more things we have to set up. And this is for actually capturing things on our OBS. So as you can see, I already have a recording section set up here, but I'm just going to show you guys how to do it. So you can either click this little plus here or just right click in the, the box. You click add and then I would just... Again, for organizational purposes, make a recording channel. And then in your sources, we have three different ways to capture video on here. And we're just going to go top to bottom here. So your first one is going to be your display capture. So I already have one, obviously, in my, my regular scene. But name whatever you want. Monitor one, two, three. If you want to have one for each of your monitors, however many you have. And then you just make source visible. Hit OK. And now this is what you're going to get. So... As you can see, this looks like just a shitstorm of stuff. That's because I have OBS on the first monitor here, or my center monitor, my main monitor. Um, but the benefits to display capture is if you are streaming or something, you can kind of just drag things on and off. As you can see, when I hit OK here and I move this, I have World of Warcraft in the background. So I can just move applications in and out. Um, I can move my script for this video here into frame, and you can just kind of show people whatever you want. So you can do some pretty unique things with that when you're recording videos. Um, or again, we will have another video on live streaming with OBS. Um, you can do some neat things with display capture there. <clears throat> We're just going to hide that. If you hit this little eye icon, it'll hide whatever you want. It will no longer be on OBS. So again, we're going to right click in source or you can hit the plus here. We'll hit the plus here this time. So the plus would be just go straight to add. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a game capture. So game capture works a couple of different ways. Um, you can capture any full screen application that's going to pop up or you can capture a specific window. You can also do the same thing as option one, but with a hotkey. Personally, I prefer a specific window. This way I can come in here. You just got to click it and then you hit OK. And now you'll have this big old long box right here. Click that. And now everything that you have opened up as an application in full screen mode or windowed full screen um, will be right here. And again, this this is an option if you don't play games in full screen. If you play things in full screen, then you can use option one. But like I play World of Warcraft in windowed borderless mode. I play most games in windowed borderless mode. I think pretty much everybody does because all tabbing and everything. Um, option one's not really going to work. But if you do play it in full screen... You can use either or. But either way, you just click it. And now I have to just tab into World of Warcraft. And then it pops up on my screen. So as you can see, exactly what I have here goes here. Now, the benefit to this one is more so if you do need something or if you have any overlays or anything, um, 
<laughs> All right, there's gonna be a little cut there. Um, I was I have two OBSs open right now, and I was looking at the other one. I was like, why is my notepad still showing up? But as you can see, when I drag this on this main monitor right here, you cannot see the notepad on this main monitor. So no matter what I put over here, if I'm recording, if I was recording with this OBS on my main monitor, you will not be able to see anything else, any overlays, Discord overlays, anything like that. So that's the one I prefer to use. Now we're just going to hide that, and we're just going to go to the third option. The third option is if you have a capture card. Let's say you want to stream on your PS5 or your Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and you have to use a capture card. Go to Video Capture Device. And now, as you can see, I have an Elgato 4K60 Pro here. So you would, again, name whatever you want, whatever name convention works for you for your organizational purposes. And then you just hit OK. Now, this should detect whatever you have there. If not, you go to the drop down, you find whichever one you have, and you just hit OK. Now, make sure there's a whole nother section, whatever. <laughs> whatever capture card you have, go watch a tutorial on how to set that up. But then after that's all set up, you should just need to plug it in. I just have an HDMI cord in from the capture card to my Nintendo Switch. So as soon as I turn my Nintendo Switch on, it'll just pop right up here. And then again, you can hide that. So again, if you guys have any questions, just leave them down in the comment below. Go into our uh, community Discord and you can send me a message anytime if you have any questions. Uh, if I need to clarify anything for you guys, feel free to reach out to me at all. But please do, if you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, leave a like. Comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I stream every night at 7 p.m. on twitch.tv-rusama. You guys have a wonderful 2023, and I wish you all the best.